I've been looking forward to this vlog for ages because I've always wanted to keep bees, but it was a bit impossible at the house we used to have because there wasn't really a garden to it. We're on an estate. And we can't keep them on a boat. Well, we could have done, but there wouldn't have been much room for us with the bees buzzing in and out. And, and we wouldn't have found the way home. And Dylan would have noticed we'd have moved, <laughs> wouldn't we? <laughs> but today's the day we're going to get our bees. I've been so looking forward to this, even though a few people have tried to put me off it. You, did you know why? Did, why? Did you hear what they said? Uh, they were saying that because I'm quite an anxious person and a worrier that the bees pick up on that and the bees won't be happy and they'll go for me every time I go near them because they can sense the anxiety. That's a bit mean, isn't it, I think? And I disagree with it, respectfully disagree, because I think that from what I've seen, when you're a beekeeper, it's quite a calming thing. And you have to concentrate because you're helping and looking after the bees. So that kind of stops the ruminating and it breaks that anxiety. Ruminating. Circle. Ruminating. You thought that was something to do with decorating I did, when we yeah. were in the production meeting, <laughs> didn't you? Ruminating. What oh we're painting our decorating kitchen, are we? Didn't you? Buff you wanted it, he wants to paint buff. it buff, don't you? No. So I respectfully disagree. I think it kind of helps stress rather than causes it. But we'll see. Yes. Won't we? Uh, I mean, it's not just the, that's not the only reason I want to keep bees. I kind of, I really like love wildlife, don't I? Yes, he does actually. You remember we the, both do. the vlogs about the owls and, and about the lambs? And in fact, do you remember on the lambing vlog, I asked a question, do spiders fart? <laughs> Well, I actually researched it after the vlog and found out that spiders do fart. And if you put a spider in the bath with you and it farted, the bubble would be so small that you wouldn't actually see it. I wonder if it'd still make that noise. But if you can't see it, has it farted? Well, this is the question I think that there baffles so many people. But while I was researching it, I'm sorry, we'll come back to bees in a minute. I actually found out that when a blue whale farts, the bubble is so big, you could fit a horse inside it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Sorry, have I put you off your grape nuts? It's something to tell your kids anyway, isn't it? Oh. Uh, but anyway, back to the bees. So we, we are first time beekeepers. Yes, well he is. And, but I've been researching it for over a year. I've been learning quite a lot and I've been speaking to about a dozen beekeepers for the past six months and getting loads of information which I've been soaking in like a sponge. He does as well. So I'm really looking forward to this. One thing I want to mention before we get going is the comment section. <laughs> this is a subject that's going to raise a lot of, you shouldn't be doing that, you should be doing it this way, you should be doing it that way. I have got a team of beekeepers helping me, so I'm not doing this on my own, and I've done a lot of research. And one thing I've found is that beekeepers tend to have differences in opinions. You can have two beekeepers that have been doing it for 30, 40 years. One will tell you to do something one way, and one will tell you to do it another way. That, exactly. So I'm trusting the people that are helping me. So by all means, Leave comments in the comment section and any tips and advice, but please don't start with the, you should be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, because I'm trusting the team of beekeepers that are helping me out, okay? Let's keep it all nice and positive. And you don't want to deal with me. <laughs> Sean wants a wee. I've got a spade and a shovel ready, so I've got to go and start preparing that land. The first thing I've got to do is dig out a level area and it's set back into the banking where it's the most sheltered from the wind. Now the ground here is really sandy, in fact it's nearly just all sand and that makes it quite easy to dig out and rake level but it also means I need to add a fair bit of gravel to give it some support. I've also put some bigger stones around the edges of the bank just to support it and stop it collapsing down. Finally I'm going to do my best steam train impression and pack it all down to a solid foundation. Once I've tidied things up, I'm going to lay a couple of wooden pallets down and make sure that everything's nice and level before I put the hives on there. Speaking of hives... Well, that's all the outdoor work done. It's all prepared and ready for the hives, which I'm just about to build. Now, I might look a bit hot and sweaty because I've just brought everything indoors. It's just too windy out there to be able to film and everything keeps blowing about. Now, I could have got the hives fully assembled and delivered but I've actually bought them as a flat pack kit to build myself. It's the same hive, I just have to build it myself. And I've done that for a couple of reasons. One is that it's a lot cheaper. I've saved myself a few hundred quid by doing it myself. But if I build it, I get to know how they're put together. So I know how they're built and all the parts and everything. And if we get any more in future, I'm going to be a little bit more knowledgeable on how it all fits together as a kit. Now, the instructions weren't exactly helpful 
<laughs> but with a combination of a couple of really good YouTube videos and also a telephone call with the guy who supplied it and a couple of people on Twitter that I know. And I've managed to build one already off camera because I didn't want to bore you looking at the camera and, and talking to people. Uh, but I'm going to quickly do a bit of a time lapse on building the second one just so that it gives you a bit of an idea how it's put together. I've chosen the National Beehive and it's one of the most popular types of hive in the UK. They're made out of western red cedar and it's a pretty light wood but very durable which makes it ideal for beehives because well it's got to cope with the highland weather conditions and you can imagine what those are like. Now it's really important to use the right bits of wood in the right place and I've got to get them perfectly positioned before I start nailing them together otherwise it could cause some problems later. The main part is called the brood chamber and that's where the bees store all the pollen and nectar and stores of honey and where the queen lays her eggs. So that's the brood box built. This is the box where we'll have 10 frames that look like this but with a foundation on, I'll show you a bit later. And the 10 frames sit in this brood box. Now it's really important when I'm building this to make sure that when the frames are in here, the top edges are not any higher than the frame of the box. Otherwise, the things that sit on top of it won't be level uh, and we don't want them sticking together and causing a problem. We want everything to be nice and flat and to take apart easy. So luckily, I don't know if you can see that, but that is very, very level. Everything measures out. It measures the same from corner to corner, uh, which is 65 centimeters exactly. So it's nice and straight and we're ready to move on and build the next box. So the mesh on this frame at the bottom forms the bottom of the hive and then this tray will slide just through these grooves like that and then the hive sits on top of this tray. After talking to a couple of local beekeepers, I decided to order a nucleus, well, two of them, of bees a few months ago. A nucleus is a small family of honeybees. It's got its own queen that's been created from a larger colony. And they come in this smaller nuke box that's got five frames inside it. And that's where they've been living and breeding and collecting for the last few weeks. Today though, it's time to introduce them to the new hive. There they are, sat by the new homes. You should hear them. Buzzing. Well, when we when we collected them, the the people that we collected them from it says if it sounds like a train in the back of your car, it's because they're getting a bit warm and fanning to keep cool. They were fine in the car, but they were absolutely fine. But when you listen to them, they do sound nice and calm, but they sound like bees. <laughs> <laughs> the what do you expect? So we've built the hives. We've placed the nukes of bees next to the hives because now comes the fun part. <laughs> I've got, we've got to take the four frames of bees that are in the nuke boxes and take them out and put them in the new home which has got more frames in it so they can expand. It's the doctor on standby. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm dreading this bit because it's the first time ever that I'm going to have handled bees. Yes. Naked. <laughs> of course oh. I'm not. What do you think I am? What do you reckon? Do you know what? It reminds me of Marshmallow Man of Ghostbusters. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is, I don't think any suit is like completely sting resistant. There's a few that claim to be, uh, but this is supposed to be quite a good one. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm very, very nervous, very nervous about being stung. So I ain't been stung since I was about four or five years old. So I don't know how I'm gonna react. I'll probably scream. Uh, the two hives, I've taken the tape off the two new boxes. So they're ready to go in. I'm just going to prepare the hives ready. I just need to do a few little things. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So this is hive number one. I'm going to take the roof off, first of all. And then inside, I've got this little feeder box. Because it's a brand new colony, I'm going to give them some sugar, water, fructose stuff. I'm going to put a lid on that. 
and I'm going to put this up and if you just look in here you can just see a little hole in the top of the brood box where the bees can get up and then they'll climb in here and they can get to that lovely syrup in there. So this is the hive, this is the brood box. I'm going to take some of these frames out so that I can get the nuke boxes in okay and then I'm going to put transfer the nuke boxes, the nuke frames from here into here. Right, this is the bit I've been dreading. Before I open the bees nuke box, I'm going to create some smoke which will keep them calm while I'm moving them. All I've done is lit some plain paper in the bottom of the smoker and then I add some hay which I've just got from the field behind us, there's plenty of it, and that gets the smoke going with plenty of air going through it. Now I don't want to overdo it with the smoke, so I'm just giving them enough to keep them as chilled as I can before very carefully moving each of the five frames out of the nuke box and into the new hive. This is the first time I've ever been as close to thousands of bees like this. And believe it or not, I'm actually not nervous at all. I've just been really careful, but I'm having a good look at them. And they seem to be doing really well as a new colony. Once all the frames are back in, I'm going to release the queen into the hive. She came separately in the nuke box in this little yellow plastic cage. And all I'm gonna do is slide open the bottom door and she just climbs out and goes down into the center of the frames where hopefully she'll start laying plenty of eggs and the colony will start to grow really fast. I've got to admit, I was convinced I was gonna be like a screaming girl that because the bees have been in the nuke boxes uh, most of last night and this morning that as soon as I opened it they were just gonna swarm around me and attack me like something out of some 70s horror flick and that you'd see me screaming and running away but it was, it was the opposite it was they were very calm and you can see they're getting used to the new surroundings already now I'm gonna leave them for a few days now to settle into the new home what I am going to do is I'm going to secure the hive to the stand that it's on. I've got a strap that I'm going to use just to keep it steady. So if any deer or anything comes and gives the bum a scratch, it's not going to move it. And I'm going to keep an eye on the feed to make sure they've got plenty to, to eat. And then eventually it's not going to take them too long before they start coming out of their own accord and, and exploring. There's plenty for them to go out and work and bring back. I'm quite relieved. I'm excited, but I'm relieved as well. These ratchet straps secure the hives and the concrete blocks to the pallet. And that means if any deer or any other wildlife comes and pushes them, the hives will be better protected. All that kneeling down and digging and building hives and stuff, proper aching all over. I'm tired and I'm only watching. It's hard work, isn't it? Do you know why your body starts creaking and cracking and aching when you turn 30? Because it's knackered. Because, yeah, it is. Back in the olden days, when Sean were in short trou shorter trousers, <laughs> before the days of modern medicine, life expectancy of us was, a, was like in your mid-30s. It was actually, yes. And that's why your body starts aching and, and you get pains in your tummy and stuff when you turn 30. Oh, I've been having them for ages then. Because it's your body telling you, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> Time to go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How old are we? Oh, no, I've been dead 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> oh dear. No, crack on. I've loved it. And the bees seem to be happy. We're going to leave them for a few days now to settle in. And then we're going to see how they're doing. I can't wait. I'm <laughs> loving it. What we're also doing is, and we didn't think of this, a very kind viewer sent us some seed bombs that have got seeds that the bees love to to pollinate and get nectar and wild and flower bombs yeah wild flower bombs uh and we thought it's a great idea so we've been we've been kind of planting them and, and throwing them about uh so we're going to put a link in the video description so if you want to help our bees and get us some seed bombs that we can get going for for next year really now for yeah. spring i think next year uh, there's a link in the video description 
But they seem very happy. Where we've positioned them, it's actually on the opposite side of our land away from the house. So there's yes. a lot of distance between them and the house. We don't want them interfering with us. And it's in a really nice, quiet part of the land. There's uh, trees and a big bank in, so they're sheltered from the north, from the west, and from the east against the wind. And the hives basically look out southeast, which is exactly where it should. So they get loads of sun on a morning, nice and early, to wake them up so that they can go out and get the pollen and the nectar and do the stuff. Lovely. It is lovely. Sorry, I'm babbling now. He always babbles, don't he? I, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have. Uh, if you have, and if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And if you're not subscribed, why? Give us a <coughs> thumbs up. And if you hit the notification bell. There you go. Ding, ding. Uh, then YouTube will let you know every time we release a brand new video. It's as if I've been on the honey already, isn't it? You've been on something. I can't wait for the honey to come. We're going to start selling it, I think, aren't we? We if are. We get enough, so you'll be able to buy honey from our bees. Probably not until next year now. It probably will be next year now, because they've got to build up the stores for this winter. Yeah. For themselves. Right, I'm off for a calm down. I think Sean needs another wee. I need another wee. I think I might have a pie. And I think we might go exploring next week. Yes. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Ta-ra. See what I have to live with? I'm rubbing my face. As long as that's all he's rubbing. Get off, mate. You remember that? Yes. Got to do it all again. Never work with children or animals or Sean. That if they did... <laughs> a bubble. Uh, good morning. Good morning. We do it all again? I didn't realise. I've been up since six o'clock to do this and it's 11 already. <coughs> you all right? Yes. Clearing your old <coughs> belly there. Bye. I wish you'd hurry up. I want to wee. Oh.